So the counterweight to earnings are the risks in the system that are finally being incorporated into the market. So for the longest time, the U.S. market just didn't think the China risk was real. And that's why you had a divergence with Europe and you had a divergence with the Asian markets. And finally, in the last two weeks, the markets are finally absorbing that this is real. It can get ugly before it gets better and that we have to reprice. All right, Guy, what are you looking for in terms of uh, next week? We're watching for all of these earnings coming out. We have seen positive earnings so far. What could dampen the mood and the optimism that investors are feeling right now? Well, first of all, thanks for having me here. You know, it's always great to be with you. I mean, it's fantastic. It's great to have you here. I mean, it's wonderful coming to you. So. <clears throat> see, that's Melissa <laughs> Lee. She, see, this is what happens at 5 o'clock every night. She gives me the hum. You're doing it to me as well. It's crazy. <clears throat> I'll answer the question. God, earnings are going to be fine. There's no question that earnings for this quarter are going to be fine. It's, it's guidance going forward, and it's all the other ancillary stuff that we talk about. You know, everybody wants to blame this sell-off on the Federal Reserve. I don't really think that's it at all. I think there are a lot of factors at work here. Europe's been a mess for quite some time. I think the market's finally catching up to the fact that maybe the markets can go down as well, and maybe we're in the midst of something that everybody hopes for until it happens. And then when it happens, everybody said, oh, my God, this is too scary for me. And you know what I'm talking no, about, No, I know Ty. exactly what you're talking about, because people are going to say, well, we do, we, we do for we a want correction. want to sell off. It's going to be a good yeah. thing, and da, 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 da. And then when it happens, we freak out, uh, Alicia, right? Yeah, I mean, people don't like it. We had a great year last year. Last year was one of the best years ever in the market. It was quiet. There was low volatility, and everything melted. And out. you sit there today, and I'm going, the, the market's actually up for the week, but it sure is doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel that way. And my guess is in the next three to four weeks, we're going to have another leg down, frankly. And I think we're going to go 5% lower from here. If it turns, it's going to turn around mid-November. And that's kind of the history of markets at this time of the year when they get that kind of angst. It lasts for several weeks, and you'll see a turn in November if it turns. So midterm election time, around that time, we get that turn in November. What do you do at that point? If that's your entry point, do you invest in the sectors that have done well this year, or do you rotate? So I think you rotate. I think that large cap tech essentially is done. And it's done for a bunch of reasons, but I think not least of which is the regulatory risk. We, we now have the Democrats and the Republicans going after large tech. That's going to keep a lid on valuations. What, what, when you say large tech, are you talking about those, those fangy names? Uh, or are you talking more broadly about large technology companies that would include Intel and Apple and uh, Microsoft. Okay, so Microsoft. I'm talking about Fang, and I'm talking about the five names that essentially drove S&P performance this year. I just think that's over. So I do think you need to rotate. And on top of that, there's a, lo there's a lot of value out there in other names that essentially were down 20% for the year so far with a lot of cash flow and good earnings that I think you can find good names to invest in. Hey, you're but, the but I would wait. I would wait.